Hey everyone, Two Lockable Guys, coming at you today with a great, delicious, this may be our tastiest episode ever. Mm. We're going to talk to Anthony Johnston. He is an owner of a delicious restaurant in the Hickson, uh, Chester Frost area. You may have heard of a little restaurant called Armando's. At Chester Frost, we're going to talk to him about his uh, how he became owner and how his menu is changing and what he's got on the menu. It's going to be great. And if you haven't gotten anything to eat, go to Armando's and grab something to eat because you're going to love to hear this. Well, you know, I'm I'm really excited about uh, today's episode because, I mean, I, well, Josh and I both, we always love talking about food. So we have a, a really nice guest on today. Um, Anthony, right, see, uh, even the birds like it. That's right. Uh, Anthony Johnston. He is the owner, operator, head uh, janitor. Yep, chief cook and bottle washer. Bottle washer of Armando's at Chester Frost. Um, I think that's how they go by. It's the one near Trister Frost on Hicks and Pike. Yep, that's us right there at the end of the rifle. Yeah. So, uh, man. Well, first off, uh, how did you become the owner of the Armando's? What what made you get into that? So it's so it's a local franchise, and I I went to work there in high school. Uh, frequented it with a couple of friends. We used to go up there and grab burgers and go to the park and. I was 15 and itching to get a paycheck. I, you know, I'd mowed grass and that kind of stuff, but was wanting to save up money and get a car. And, and while I was up there eating one day, I was like, Hey, I know you guys are hiring. Let me fill out an application. The owner was like, well, let's sit down and talk. So I kind of gave him my little brief, brief interview. And he's like, I think I know your mom. And it turns out we're kind of, I mean, we had background. Our family had, had, had a story with each other already. And like I like I'd mentioned to you guys, he uh he basically offered me the job, but I was but I was in band there with Josh, and we were we were mid marching season, and he was like, I gotta have you on Fridays and Saturdays. I said, well, that's just not an option for me right now. I don't I don't drive myself, and I am obligated at school. So uh, when marching season went over in October, I guess of ninety one, is that right? Somewhere around ninety, yeah. 91, 91, October of 91, yeah, I, I stepped in and started dishwashing and, and assembling hamburgers and, and hung out and got to know the, the routine and, and and kind of fell in love with the food business. Prior to that, I thought I wanted to be a veterinarian, and I, and I still have a crazy love for critters, obviously, but, um, but yeah, f- fell in love with food, and I ventured out and did a couple of other food things, but I but I ended up there. So so the the owner came to me when I was managing another restaurant here in town. He's like, "Hey, I'm going to sell the restaurant." I said, "Ah, oh, you're not ready to do that." He was well in his 60s at the time. He said, "You're right, but I can't do it by myself." He said, "Well, come back and help me." So I came back and I was managing both restaurants for about nine months, and I I came to him and I said, "I can't keep doing this." He said, "Well, what if I sell you the restaurant?" I said, "Well, at the time I was 20." Four, I said, yeah, I think all the equity I got, the sweat that I'm putting in on, yeah, not to say I didn't have any finances, but I was a 24 year old guy and right. I was blowing it on what I wanted to. Right. And he said, he said, well, I'll hold the note. He said, I, I'll let you pay, I'll let you lease it for three years. I'll put that towards the down payment, and and then I'll hold the note on it. And the rest is history. So I paid it off in about 10 years. So it's been paid off, and it's physically the property's mine, the restaurant's mine. If I wanted to serve you know, beer and wings tomorrow instead of burgers and leave Armando's on the, on the side of the building, I could do that. If I want to put Anthony's on the side of the building tomorrow, I could do that. It's it's mine to do as I wish. But, um, you know, Armando's used to have a pretty good standing in, in Chattanooga area. Old timers still know that it means a great big hamburger and, you know, deluxe grilled cheese and the and the staples that we've always had. So I've I've tried to do what I can to kind of uphold what, what everybody knew knew it as. Right, right. So, um, I noticed you've gone through some changes over the past few years. Um, it looks like you're no longer doing uh, dinner, but you've added breakfast. I did. We we had kicked that around for quite a while. I mean, there's a 
we we got a couple of places up our end of the county that do a decent breakfast, um, you know, and Hardy's and Bojangles on Hickson Pike that are, you know, seven and eight miles respective. Well, one's five miles and then one's about eight miles from me, respectively. Do great drive through breakfast business. And and I was missing time at home because pretty much if the doors were open, I was there. So I was putting in, well, for the for 20, for 27 and a half years, I put in about 80 hours a week. Wow. So, so it was tough having a, having a child at home. He's nine now and a wife, you know, and any, and anything I wanted to do outside of, you know, outside of 10 to 10 every day was my friends and family could count me out unless it was on Sunday or after 10 PM or before 10 AM. Right. So it was rough. It was, it was rough. And I decided I'd been thinking about it for years and I was like, you know what, let's pick up breakfast. And already, even before COVID, uh, employment was getting tough i mean any right. any any small employer knows that it's just hard not just to retain but to find good employees that you even if they're not qualified that you can qualify and hold on to was tough and uh and the, and the timing was right you know i just right. i decided that that january 1 of 2020 that's what i was going to try and i was going to give myself a year to try it i'm not sure okay. i picked the right year <laughs> yeah, that's what i was well, gonna I, ask <laughs> i really thought it was uh covid induced uh but um i see now that it's it was before the really the covid stuff got to going big so that's pretty interesting uh to say the least i mean it's like kind of like you were you were led in the way to uh hey this is what we need to do because i think um, even with, uh, is, is that the biggest problem, uh, of, of not having, of, of having the restaurant is, uh, keeping and retaining employees? You know, in the past, it, it has never been as hard as it has in probably the last three years. I mean, last year, obviously it was just crazy. And this year so far is crazy, but even, even in a year and a half prior, it had got just extremely difficult. You know, well, I understand, I understand restaurant works, you know, is right there in the bottom rungs. I don't ever, I don't ever expect anybody that I hire in the door, even if they've had management experience and I'm, and I'm hiring them in at, you know, twice, three times the minimum wage. I still don't expect them to be a long-term employee. I I pretty much assume because of my trade that, that I'm going to be a step. Ranking, uh, in, uh, uh, jobs of, uh, (laughs) low skill that, uh, just needs some bodies there to work. I think, uh, Plumbing, auto detailing, and um, restaurant work are, are right there on the bottom rungs of of service industry. Warm, warm body means a whole lot, and, and you know, just having somebody that fills in that that gap in the schedule is hard to find. Right now. Well, that I, <laughs> that's what I tell the guys that come and help me. Is like, look, man, there's going to be a lot of standing around, a lot of hurry up, a lot of hurry up and wait, hurry but, up and wait. But just having you here to hand me something when I'm on top of a ladder or, or if I'm under a sink in a cabinet, you know, yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It, I mean, it means the world. Run, run back to the truck and get this. Cause I'm going to keep this house from flooding. Right. right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, well, I mean, you're right, man. Finding people to sit and, and, and just work is, is hard, yep. much, much less, you know, find somebody that knows a little bit about it to be able to do stuff and stay with you. I, I think I think it really was. I think it was some some of the Lord's guidance, and I was definitely blessed just to to know that. And a lot of friends in the industry have told me they said, you know, you couldn't have picked a better time to change your hours. I said, yeah, but it wasn't the right time to try to judge whether whether it was the right time to change my hours. Yeah, yeah. And I can't I can't I can't base my decision on what happened in 2020, and I won't be able to base it on what happens in 2021. Um, I have. You know, we struggled financially. We're still not open in the dining room because I, I can't staff it. I still can't staff it. Right. Now, is that, is that the reason that you've got it closed still is because you just don't have, I mean, you don't have anyone working? Pretty much. I mean, it's 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 me and two others right now. Yeah, I was going to I was gonna ask you that. Takes, yeah. I mean, and, and it takes the three of us just just to get food out, you know, and that's not uh, not to handle customers coming in in the door inside um, right yeah right and, and and i thought you know maybe by the time that the band was lifted last week that i may have something in place and and i wasn't going to have to police the dining room i just i just have to wait tables but yeah I, I still don't have that in place so 
Well, them you know, with them lifting the band, it's still you got to still social distance though, right? Or can you be I, fully open? I hear different stories. Nobody locally is policing it. Yeah. My health department told me from the get go they're not going to police it. Sheriff's department and the mayor himself has told me they're not going to police it. Yeah. So, you know what? What's what's the holdup? I mean, the only thing is, you know, you get you make somebody sick, then you get drug. You're going to get drugged through the mud. Oh yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely. I've had I've had both my shots, but that doesn't mean that you know you or Jennifer come in and one of y'all picked it up from a kid on your way in, and y'all don't even know you're sick. You right. sit down. Somebody sits six feet away from you. They get sick. You know, somebody brushes arms with them on the way out the door, and they're sick. Turns out, yeah. twenty people got sick. Where? What was their common denominator? They were all at Armando's on Thursday <laughs> afternoon, you know. <laughs> not, not the publicity that you want. <laughs> no, no. That's one of those where, you know, all publicity is not necessarily good. Well, I, one of the things I, I think we've kind of uh, uh, just everybody knows about the, the COVID stuff. And what I really want to talk about, what I really think people want to hear, let's talk about the food. Let, let's right, talk let's about some big what are your best sellers? What, what cheese, uh, cheese, cheeseburger is it, and always been it, and I hope always will be it. No doubt. You know, even even over a hamburger and over a bacon cheeseburger, but cheeseburgers cheeseburgers are just historically three to one of anything on the menu. You what, know, I'm gonna uh, have. We'll what have size days. is that? Uh, it's a it's a seven to eight ounce patty, so fully dressed, it's over a pound. You put a bun with mayonnaise, lettuce, tomato pickle. <laughs> You're, it's over a pound, and then you throw another half pound of fries, you know, even though the serving size is technically on the bag, it's what, a three or four ounce portion. So you get about, what, three people's order of fries and <laughs> two and a half people's order of burger. But, you know, who's, who's counting? If you're, if you're there to get it, you know what you're, you know what you're in for. That's what we're talking about. See, that sounds absolutely delicious. And, uh, like, do you have other things besides, fr- I know you do, besides French fries? Like, uh, okay, I mean, we've got, yeah, tater tots, onion rings, frips, which are kind of like a house fried chip, jalapeno oh. poppers, cheese sticks, battered mushrooms. I'll see on these. Occasion, <laughs> on occasion, you can catch me frying pickles or green tomatoes, you know, just. Steve, were, yes. were, were you looking for a healthier option? Is that where you were going? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I mean, no. We've, got, we've got salads, and, and I had a guy pull through the other morning. He was like, you know, I know what I want, but I know what I need. And I was like, well, you know we make a hamburger salad. And he's like, a what? And I was like, yeah, just, you know, a bed of lettuce, diced tomato, cheese. And instead of peppers, we'll put pickles on it and onions. And then we just take that eight-ounce hamburger patty, smash it up, and just throw it over that bed of lettuce. And and if you douse it with another, you know, half cup of Thousand Island, it's pretty. It's it, for salad. It's awesome. <laughs> the the best of name. the best of both worlds. Who, yeah. who was that comedian? Who was the comedian? You know, they always talked about the. Oh, no, it was that Budweiser commercial with the taco salad. It's a salad, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's all that matters. Man, I love that it. is uh, that is awesome. Well, what about the breakfast menu? What, so, what, what we got going on there? I mean. What's a best seller for breakfast? Pancakes or a bowl. So we do a bowl and do tots in the bottom with a cheesy scrambled egg, a little a little spoonful of gravy, and a four ounce sausage patty on top of that. Man. So, or or pancakes, and our pancakes are just pretty phenomenal. We cook them on that same flat grill that we cook the burgers on, and I think that I think that fifty year old griddle that we have is just. It does something to everything that touches it. it it's yep. part of the magic behind Armando's. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I agree. That All right, man. Great. So, so what do I have to do to get you to open one up in Red Bank? Hmm. Well, you know, Bob that had that started Armando's. That was his son had that one there on Brown Town Road. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. But but it was it, it was kind of hidden. It he, was he, hidden. He, and he it, just, but it but it was a hidden gem. He had good. He had great food, but. Whoever owned that building there that was the Red Food, and I don't know if Bilo or whoever still owns that property, didn't want to put him a grease trap in when uh, WWTA uh, Wastewater Treatment Authority was raising hell with everybody. I don't yeah. know if you remember when they really when they really cracked down on dubs. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, they basically they hit him up, and he tried to get the, the people that own the property to come in and, you know, hey, at least meet me halfway. I'll pay to put it in if you guys will come out and do the, the dirt work. And they wouldn't. They weren't willing to do it. He just basically had to lock it down. Wow. I was wondering what happened to it. That's that's the story I got. Yeah. Well, what happened to the one in Hickson? There was a uh, I frequented the one in Hickson and I there thought it was DuPont Parkway. Yes. Are there it's any still, still open? 
There is still the original one on Main Street. It's still there. It's run by Beth and Eric Beard. There's another one on 58. Yep. And and they still do burgers, but they focus a lot on meat and three. They're right across the street from Anchors that has a really good strong hold on 58. So they kind of, like, okay. even though they do sandwiches, they kind of had to do a little, they, they varied their menu a little more because Anchors just is what they are. Right. right. That, had that market under wraps. Uh, there's still one at Shalliford and Lee Highway, kind of behind where the Palms was. Yeah. It's still there. Oh. And there's one. Yeah, and there's one there, East, East Brainerd and Grazeville there across from the CVS that backs up their drive-through traffic out on the East Brainerd Road. Oh, <laughs> Do you still uh, is the is the Armando's like a a, a franchise? Do you pay fees to use the name? If, or if, if you guys wanted to start one, yes, you're gonna you're gonna have to you're gonna have to pay in. Is what I've heard. I kind of got grandfathered in. I think mine was either the second or the third that Bob had started as his. Loosest version of a franchise you can imagine, and uh, and it was kind of a lock, stock, and barrel. The names on the names on the outside, the menus on the inside. We put the equipment in here and hired the staff, and he sold it off lock, stock, and barrel running. Ah, okay, okay, I see. Yeah, so yeah, that's kind of that's kind of where I was saying, you know, if I wanted to do pizza and wings tomorrow and give up burgers, or if I wanted to change the name to Anthony's or whatever mm-hmm. tomorrow, I could I could do that as well, and I'm not I'm not bound. Bound to anybody in financial terms or or name. All right, I gotta know how do you make the gravy for the biscuits in the morning, and do people absolutely love it like I think they should? <laughs> it's is it a pre mix? Hey man, okay. it can't be giving secrets away. Well, I don't want secrets. I just want to know <laughs> what I'm about to expect. Oh me, me personally, man, I like it. I like it browner. I like to use. Bacon grease and sausage in it, and brown the and brown the the, the flour till it's got some taste to it. Uh, right, a little salt, little salt and pepper, and then and then fatten it up with milk. I had too many people complain about having real gravy. They're all too used to Hardee's. Ah. I, I have to sell a powdered mix now that's stark white with a little bit of pepper in it. Oh man! Well, uh, you know, I do like the. I am used to have gotten used to the Hardee's gravy. So, would you say it's on the the same? Uh, I don't know something close to that. Is that what you're yeah. kind of saying? Man, okay. it's got it's it got to be it better is. than Hardee's. It's it's better than Hardee's and Jack's, but yes, it's it's still it's still it's a it's a dry base mix. That's a, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I, I think that's perfectly great. Yeah. I mean, as as long as I tell you, because I mean, ridiculously, I love the stupid gravy I get from uh, Dairy Queen to dip my chicken fingers in. You know, I haven't had that in forever, but I remember Sonic and Dairy Queen both used to always serve you a piece of toast and a little cup of gravy on the side. And now that I see it on the commercial, Dairy Queen's got what those little mini biscuits and a cup of yeah. gravy with their chicken. I'm like, that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sonic quit doing it. So I, I don't even want to talk about them, but <laughs> yeah, Dairy Queen still does it and uh, they're pretty good. Oh, they're Steve, pretty, Steve's got a long history with Sonic. Yes, yeah. I do. Yeah. yeah. That, that was uh was that your yeah, first I, job, Steve, with Sonic? That was. I started there, uh, Sonic and Red Bank, when I was 14. And how old are you, Steve? I am older than that now. We, we uh, were just we see. were just wee little pups when we, Steve started. Uh, okay. <laughs> let's see. I, um, I was 14 in 1987. Yeah. Now, he's not too much older than us. But, then I know, I know a guy that may have been in management over there with you at one point in time. What was his name? Jay White. <sighs> That sounds like uh, is he older than you or younger? Yes, yes. that sounds Probably. like it was before me. Actually, he, 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 he may have been. He played football at Red Bank, but it would have been back in the it would have been in the early eighties, probably. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, Steve, yeah, you were was, you were class of ninety one. That is correct. Yeah, yeah. So Steve's not much older than we are. I got you. Okay. Yeah, but I, that name sounds real familiar. Um, there were several folks that, that had he's worked a, there. He's a he's a doctor here in town now, but it's funny how he and I click could, just because we're food people. He's, right. He used to be in restaurant <laughs> management and slinging burgers, and it's he and he and I have a, have that kinship over the over the over the burgers. So, do you think that that's uh, being a restaurant owner? Is that one of the problems right now with with uh, all the restaurants? Um, I mean, the the service is like all the fast food places. The service has just gone downhill. 
the wait times have gone up. There's no one that cares, and are they just hard to staff? You think that's what the? Absolutely. We yeah. uh, we went out for my mother's birthday three weekends ago. We went to Chili's at Northgate with a party of seven. We went inside. There was nobody waiting outside, and they told they literally told us the hostess said, "We can't seat you." This was on a Sunday afternoon, at like two o'clock. So it's past lunch. We can't seat you. We can't handle a party that big. We don't have staff for it. Holy wow. crap. So we went back last weekend on Sunday. We're like, you know what? We'll try it again. Surely they've got their crap together. You know, they, I mean, it's the weekend. Right. This was just the three of us, my wife, my son, and myself at about 2.30 on Sunday. We're sorry. We can't seat you. Wow. And this is, I mean, you know, this is a sit down chain establishment. Yeah. You know, you would think, you would think that they had the finances to handle, you know, recovery well enough but i mean it's not really uh, somebody sat down talking about the money that that people are drawing off of unemployment you know i know you guys have seen all the forwarded you know messages right. through facebook and all that, that oh yeah but you know people are making forty thousand dollars a year sitting at home right right well, i didn't i didn't draw an income from the restaurant at all last year which is okay i mean my wife we, we get by and i'm never gonna right. starve obviously <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, we've always got but, something to eat but but as a household we didn't draw what technically they're saying that an individual can bring home on unemployment right now wow well I mean, we've we've gone through the breakfast is there anything sweet for breakfast i mean i know sometimes i have a little sweet i guess the pancakes the the syrup pancakes, and stuff. the pancakes are you can actually you and and we've got to well, I probably sell as many chocolate chip pancakes as I do anything else. I keep blueberries around. I do blueberry pancakes. I ran Friday. I did uh, some s'mores pancakes, put graham cracker crumbs, mini marshmallows, and chocolate chips in them. Oh, man. Um, and do you, uh, do you let people know that this is going to happen, or is it just kind I'll, of a— I'll throw it out on Facebook and be like, hey, this is what we're doing today. Yeah. We did, and we also—we we, kind of—we did it before— we're going to knock on Sonic again. We did it before Sonic did. We started doing what we call the wake and shake. So we do like a, a coffee blended milkshake as well. So uh -huh. we, you know, we straight up blue, brew strong coffee. And instead of, you know, thinning down your milkshake with a shot of milk or anything, we'll blend it with, you know, soft serve that we're making there. So does your ice cream machine break down frequently? You know, they are junk. They really are. There's not <laughs> there's not a good one. I've got, I've got a tailor, and, and the one I got, I got out of a blimpy 15 years ago, and I know how to rebuild it, refurb it, and I, and I work on it constantly. And honestly, I probably pay more for it in parts than I do in mix that I put in it. But I, <laughs> right. I, but I do my damnedest to keep it working. <laughs> yeah. And I, it I really is. It's about, it's about maintenance, and I think most of McDonald's problem is, you know, they got, they got that, that employment issue. You know, you got... I, they hire younger than I do. They got fourteen and fifteen year olds in there that are just pulling the handle, hoping it's going to make ice cream every time they pull the handle. Well, it you know it takes a little more than that. Yeah, I saw a really good uh, mm -hmm. little uh, little clip, a little expose on McDonald's ice cream machines, and and their their it was the Taylor machines, and and what they ended up saying is when you sign up for the McDonald's franchise, you sign a thing where you won't work on the machine; you will just pay the Taylor. Uh, a person to come work on it the repairman and they yeah the tailor repairman to come in and work on it and that's in your contract of your franchise agreement and so and they said they can't use any other ice cream machines so i, I believe it and and mcdonald's kind of did come out with something innovative it's innovative and gross and i don't know what how much truth there is to it i've never worked at mcdonald's but but a, an ice cream machine rep told me this so the, the ice cream machines that they have in mcdonald's right now Rethermalize that so at night they don't have to empty that ice cream out. It, right, it heats that machine up to 160 degrees and it repasteurizes that mix that's in there, so it's cooking it overnight. Yes. So when they so when they turn it back on in the morning, it just chills it back down and refreezes it. So you think about it, it's pretty for his, for employees. It's super low maintenance. They're not having to break it down and clean it every day like I am. But mm -hmm. but you're also putting all that you're putting all your all your eggs in that one basket. You know. <laughs> And, you, don't know, and, you don't know if there's good mix in there, bad mix in there, what somebody put in there, left a cleaning rag or, or <laughs> bugs or you know, <laughs> who knows. Well, I, I can confirm that in the little documentary I watched that they said that that was exactly what it did. And that would sometimes cause the fault. Like they said, 
sometimes when it goes overnight, they said if it did, if it got up to like 155 and didn't finish the cycle, the machine wouldn't work. So it's kind of like a little safety thing where if the 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 mix wasn't fully uh, properly prepared, drive, right? yeah, yeah, then it, the machine wouldn't work. So that was one of the the many many issues with that. But it, besides that, you so you've got ice cream we and do. Armando's. What are the kind of des- desserts? Uh, we do, we do a bunch of frozen pies, but sometimes we'll do you know sometimes we'll do some specialty stuff. Uh, Hey, there's we'll nothing see. wrong with a frozen pie. At, at some point this week, we're going to run Dole Whip. And I know I know if you get on Pinterest or TikTok or Facebook, you've seen what Disney's Dole Whip is. Like, I don't have a knockoff recipe. I buy the same stuff that Disney puts out in Dole Whip, Whip which is a pineapple soft serve, and it's phenomenal. And I just put a little blip out there on Facebook because if I, like, really advertised it, all we would do is sell ice cream that day. Right. right. And then you'd break down the machine and then you'd have to repair it and it'd be a loss. <laughs> yeah. I'd have something so, Donald's on it. <laughs> so, so what do you think? Because you've you've been in business now for quite a while. Um, right. And especially that Armando's, what did you say, 30 years that that yep. Armando's has been in existence? That, what, that, that he's story? been there. That's how long I've been there. He's been there oh, 30 wow. years. How long has the business actually been there? I think it probably started in the mid 80s, as best I can tell. And I came on in '91, so I mean, it was probably it was probably there at least five years prior to me, yeah. so probably 35 years. Yeah. So, what's the why is it still in business? You see, so many restaurants come and go. What's the secret to the success of your particular your Armando's? You know, a lot of people say location, location, location. I don't think that has a whole lot to do with it. I think we are in a good spot. You know, we're right outside the county park. People are up there. It's busy. And April to August is always a better time for me than any other time because you got the ball fields at Middle Valley and Chester Frost right there. Right. But, but I think I think people just get accustomed to what you're doing, you know. And you know, if, if people want that same big, you know, pound and a half worth of cheeseburger and a, and more tots or onion rings than you can eat at a normal meal, they know where to go get it. Right. Yeah. Um, the Armando's, I mean, has always had a good name for me i mean whenever i go around town i mean i hit the one over here that uh, tim owned in hickson right. and right. uh I, I loved it i mean i loved it for years and uh right. i i i don't remember ever i remember eating once or twice at the one in red bank but i never would remember that it was there so that was one of the problems with that but the one on uh shelford road and lee highway um, yep. eight there probably most recently, you know, probably ate there within the past year, and it was just a delight. It was a nice throwback to it. like reminded me of going to the one in Hickson. Yeah, you walk uh, you walk in the door and it almost smells the same. Like sometimes, some sometimes I still get hit with you know smells from twenty years ago, and it you know I'm just yes. like I know I'm doing something right when it smells when it's when it has that smell. <laughs> yeah, I agree. The um. I mean that's awesome. That that's some great stuff. Uh anything uh you're excited about coming up other than the uh what you call that? The 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 dole uh, whip. The dole whip. Um, I'm just excited to get over over the crap that's going on right now and, and the you know, the state of things and, and right. people and hoping people get back to work and I hope I hope we can get back to I mean I know it's all gonna be a new sense of normal. You know, everybody says wait till it gets back to normal. It's never gonna be what we remember it as. Right. Everything everything's new. But but I'm just I'm ready for I'm ready for some sense of normalcy. Honestly for about a free you know almost a year and a half now, just over a year, I don't know what to expect week to week. Right. You know, for, well, fortunately with being able to cut back and being able to you know, we've we've weaned back to so few employees that the the reliability that I have with the people that I do have is great. So I, I but but I'd like to get back to to more than more than getting by right now. Right. We need to go over a, f- a few things. I, th- I think we need to go over um, the best way to order uh, the Armandos from your place. Is is to go online? Is it to just show up? Is it what's the, what's the best way? Call it. Call ahead is the easiest way for us. Okay. Just give us a call because we're sitting there and we know the menu. And if you if you get online, it can be almost overwhelming because you're given every option for everything. So you, right. for a cheeseburger that comes with mayonnaise, lettuce, tomato, pickle, and onion, when you look online, you can also choose from 
every cheese. You know, it's not just American. You can choose from every continent, from, you know, Thousand Island mayonnaise, mustard, ketchup. And then you can choose from every vegetable, from grilled onions to sauerkraut. You know, so we get we get some oddball uh, online orders because <laughs> people aren't sure. You know, they'll order a cheeseburger, medium well, on a bun, cut in half, American cheese, <laughs> no sauerkraut, no chili, no, you know, and, and if you call us, all you have to do is tell us what you want. And we know how, you know, we know how to, to get there the easy way. Um, if you can navigate it online, that's just as easy for us, too. Uh, if you can't make it to us, DoorDash and Uber Eats and uh, Grubhub are all business partners with us now. We do let um, them take their markup, so you're actually not you're not taking away from me, but uh, but they are getting a substantial profit from the business that you do with them. So okay, on on the DoorDash and and Uber Eats and Grubhub stuff, how how does yep. all that work on your end? So they, they call you up and they're like, we want you to be a partner. And you're like, okay, well, you know, I'd, I'd love to have delivery, but I can't afford the liability insurance that, you know, Domino's and Pizza Hut have. Well, right. we're going to, we're going to take, we're going to take care of all that for you. We do tie on, tie on a delivery fee and that, that does factor in where, where they're at on the map in, in, in correspondence to you. So, you know, within five miles, it's whatever, 350. I, I, honestly, I have no idea what the, what they yeah. how they figured that that fee out but they want to tag they want they straight up want 30 percent of of everything so basically they want you they want you to, to go on 70 percent of your of your menu price they want you to get by on that i'm like right There's, i've got you know being a small place and trying to stay competitive i've got high food costs you know a lot of my food costs is over 50 percent right right so, so you go you go giving me 70 percent of the 50 percent i'm clearing you know it's really a lot of times it's not worth my time. Right. You know, so what, what's, what's this work? So, so I sat down with one of them that was one of the early ones. And I think it was, I think it was DoorDash was the first one that I actually listened to. And I said, I said, here's, here's an option. I said, can you do this? I said, can you, can you mark it up just a straight 30% over my menu price? So I thought 99 cheeseburger now is, you know, whatever, 823. And they're like, you know, technically no, but yeah, you give us the menu and we'll do that, and we'll and we'll still pay you the seventy percent. We'll get the thirty, so I still get the five ninety nine for the cheeseburger. But you know, the, the sad the part, this, yeah, the sad part is the customer is having to pay that eight twenty three for it and their delivery fee. Okay, is is it a win for me? Sometimes, I mean, there are days that it's a third of my business is going out the door in deliveries, and they handle they handle the payment processing, and I get it deposited in the bank once a week, so. It is a win, and yeah. it is a and it is a revenue stream that I didn't have in the past, and especially more so with with people being homebound. You know, just right. when I, when I first started looking at it, I was like, well, you know, you got like hometown suites over there. You know, you got a lot of people that don't have transportation, or they're a one a one vehicle family that you know somebody's at work and somebody's at home, and that somebody that's at home is dependent on the somebody that's at work to get them fed. Well, you know. Maybe the kid was sick and they're stuck at home. Both of them are there today or, you know, dinner didn't come through last night or didn't make it or, you know, I'm just hungry and I need something. If they've right. got the money, to, if they've got the money or the means to do it, and, but not the means, you know, and, and one of these delivery partners does offer them the means, I think it's great. Yeah. Yeah. And it I is, like it's, I said, it's, it's that revenue stream that I didn't have previously. Yeah. Well, see, that's cool that they're doing that with you that way. I mean, yeah, it, it bites for the customer, but you're still getting your money. That was my yep. thing about it. Most of the, the, you know, the smaller guys are taking that hit, you know, that 30% and hit. I, and I've talked to a couple of other smaller guys that don't offer it yet. I've just, you know, with kinships that I have with different people and I'm like, right. offer it, but hold, but hold the row with them. Just say, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to eat. I'm not going to eat that 30% that you want, but if they want to mark it up and you can still sell it for that, I mean, you know, I say, I say go for it. Right, right. Well, see, that was one of my big deals about not not using those services because Dude, I don't I don't pay for pizza delivery. <laughs> <laughs> it's we been a long time since I have we, too. I usually go probably, pick it we've up. Probably done it, we've probably done it twice in the last three years, and at one point, one of those points, my my wife had 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 some seizures and had her license taken away and was at home in the evenings, and she was just like. I'm not cooking tonight, and you know, and that's okay. Right. Uh, you know, that's that's more reason to hire delivery. 
Yeah. And there are those circ- there are those circumstances, but yeah, I'll I'll throw some clothes on and I'll run four miles down the road to right. wherever. Yeah, Steve's wife's a pizza delivery person. <laughs> yeah, she loves people who pay for delivery. I actually yeah, had her. Really? She actually had her best night ever uh, last night. Did she? Uh, so uh-huh. yeah, bizarre. Just and it's so random uh, the nights that uh, she makes really good. I mean, uh, sometimes um uh, a, a thursday night is great uh other nights the sunday nights are great it's just totally random hmm. and it's not and it's not always the regulars and it's not always the, the big orders exactly yeah hey uh we always ask uh one question and uh, i think it has come the time to ask that question of you what was your first vehicle my first vehicle and josh may remember it i had a 79 Camaro Berlinetta. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and I got in a wreck. I got in a wreck in North Chattanooga about a year into driving it and messed up. Even though the car we got the car looking back right, neither one of the doors opened. So we Dukes a Hazard styled it for about three years. That's <laughs> <laughs> even better. Yes. Yep. What color was it? It was white with a blue interior. It was a good looking car. Yeah. And it yep. and it run like a, it run like a scald the dog, but I had to I had to check the gas. I had to check the gas and fill it up with oil. That's kind of how it worked. Yeah, well, that's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that that's pretty good. I, I love the fact that you get to Dukes a hazard. It. <laughs> that's yes, yes, amazing. Yes, we did. And I mean, we would just for fun we'd slide the hood. You know, you had to slide across the hood to get the other side. But just right. to in the window. And I've always so, been a I've always been a large guy. I mean, I'm a big guy. And crawling in and out of any car window is not easy. But fortunately. Even though it was a two seater, those Camaro windows were good size. They, yeah, they were they were pretty wide, weren't they? Yeah, <laughs> that is awesome. That is so awesome. Yeah. Well, what's a good way to uh, for people to get in touch with you? I know we've talked about how to order, but if they want to learn about uh, Armando's and what you offer at Chester Frost Park, there or the I you guess can, is this, go ahead. Yep. <laughs> you can see you can see the whole menu online at ChesterFrostArmando's dot com. You can also link to our online, which doesn't offer delivery, but that is our online ordering service, and it goes straight into my POS, and it'll tell you that it's got a 30-minute wait time standard in there. But if you place the order and you head my way, I'll get it ready. Um, if if you have questions, obviously the phone phone is still available even if you place the order online, but you can go ahead and make the payment and everything. So if you're you know tied up in an office somewhere or you're tied up at work and need to send somebody out, you can place that order, get it paid for, and then either come pick it up or send somebody after it. You can get on DoorDash. You can get on Uber Eats. You can get on Grubhub. And we were partners with Postmates, but Post- Postmates just dro- kind of dropped the ball, and I think they're now merging with Uber Eats anyway. So um, right. you can get you can get on all those, and we're we're on we're partners with all those. We do also serve. We didn't touch on this. I serve breakfast and lunch from six till two. So I have people that work third shift. Volkswagen and McKee and Amazon that want to catfish dinner at six o'clock in the morning. I've got a guy that gets a cheeseburger every day at, you know, between six and seven. That's what he wants. And I'm cool with See, that. Oh, no, that's so great. You can get lunch at all open hours or yep. breakfast at all open hours. Yep. You got it. Wow. Well, that's yep. great. That's that. We should have talked about that first. <laughs> that's amazing. I got, yeah. I got people that are that now are just like, go ahead and throw an egg on my burger. And I'm like, yeah, you want it runny? Absolutely. Yeah. I want it as messy as I can get it. So, yeah. It's... Oh, yeah. Oh, man. It has been awesome. I'm so hungry right now. It's not even funny. Well, it's a little late for, for my burger time, but in the next, what, what time is it? So, in about. In about another eight hours, I'll be there. We can, go, right, get, well, we can go get us a runny hamburger. Do it. Yes. Do it, man. <laughs> Try some of that gravy. Um, All right. And so can well, you get ice cream in the morning, too? Absolutely. That, yeah, that wake, oh, wake yeah. and shake or just soft serve, whatever you want, man. Man, this has been the – this has been almost like torture. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm glad I ate before we had this conversation. I wish I would have. I mean, uh, you know, it's kind of like going to the uh, grocery store hungry. Uh, right. I do, I do that a the, lot. I do that a lot. The restaurant here when you're starving. So it's so it's terrible. But that's awesome. Man, uh, we we really wish you guys a lot of success. And, and, and I'm really freaking excited about how long you've been in business. And 
how awesome uh, of service it seems you've given. I mean, I don't think you can uh, have bad service and be in business for um, over 30 years. And Agreed, yeah. Um, I just don't think that's possible. So uh, really appreciate your time. And yeah, I hope no we didn't get too much into your to your family or morning time. But no, we're really good. We're good. Talking to you. No, man, it's been awesome. Josh, got anything to add? Uh, just what the bird did there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is all, awesome. All my, neighbor, all my neighbors think they're sexy. I mean. That's right. That's right, man. That's great. No, man. I, you know, each time I'm I'm up that way around lunch, you know, I always try to come in. I know, do. I've, I appreciate it. I I've see, been I, up there I a few times. And, yep. uh, and like I said, man, I, boy, I wish you were, were closer to the house. We'd be there all the time. <laughs> mm. But uh, I'm, good, I'm good where I'm at, but I wish I could be everywhere. Oh yeah, yeah, I heard that, man. Uh, that, uh, something I was wanting wanting to know is, at the peak, how many people have you had working for you at one time? About twelve. About, about twelve. Yeah, about wow. twelve on the pay. About twelve on the payroll, and we could do. We have about four people in the kitchen, and about three, two or three girls out front. So, no more than seven on a shift. Right. I mean, but, but yeah, about 12, about 12 people on the payroll is about, about maxed out. I mean, you know, it's just a little, what do we see? 44 with, I think we can see 32 outside if, you know, if we're full capacity inside and we're, we try to push like ball teams or people that have been up to the lake and they're still in their bathing suit. You know, you want to sit at a picnic table outside. (laughs) Um, (laughs) um, You You got that bikini on, honey. You need to take that outside. (laughs) Yeah, I can't work that way. (laughs) (laughs) People watching has always, we we are in a good location for that. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure you got some some good ones that come up in there. Yeah, there's bad ones too. You know, there's, a, <laughs> there's a, the golden ground puts up those little, they used to put up those, we don't take bathing, wet bathing suit money. You know, we get that stuff too. Oh, yeah. yeah. I bet. Uh, but yeah, but yeah, it is. It's, it's, we're in a good spot. Yeah. That, that is a good location, man. It's right there. It is. It is. Just right there in the middle of everything, man. Yep. Do you have a, do you have a no shirt, no shoes, no dice policy? <laughs> yeah. Loose, <laughs> loosely. Very, very loose. I mean, there's there's some people that I'm just not gonna change. You know, I'm not. You know, she she looks good and nobody's opposed. We're just gonna have to let it go. Oh, <laughs> but, if he's, but, if, but if he's in, you know, if he's in here with his uh with his puka shell necklace, with his hat turned backwards and trying to be a badass, then yeah, you need to go. You need to go put a shirt on there, uh, pool boy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you can call him Fabio too. Yeah, Fabio, yeah, short on yeah, there, Fabio. Get on Fabio. out of here, frat boy. Yeah, um, exactly. Eat your yeah. burger outside. Oh man. Well, dude, we uh, we appreciate you uh, hanging out with us this evening. Yeah, it's fun. You got something else we can, you got something else we can talk about sometime. I'm all in. Oh yeah. No, oh, I'm sure we'll come up with something, brother. <laughs> good deal. <laughs> all right, but I do like. All right, guys. Have a, have a good evening. Man, I really appreciate Anthony coming on here. I was going to say, man, I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I am too. No, I'm t- t- seriously, uh, I can't wait to go try out some of that. Uh, I want to try that Dole Whip whenever he gets it going. Um, but I guess I'll just have to find out. But You'll have to wait till next time. Got to try his gravy. Got to try the breakfast. Got to try, go by there and get me a big juicy hamburger with a load of French fries or onion rings. And, oh, you got to. I'm going to, I'm going to have to do this like now. Let's go. Yep. I agree. So we're going to get off here and we're going to head over to Armando's at Chester Frost. Um, you should too. I recommend it highly. We're two likable guys. Uh, I'm Steve. This is my awesome and great co host, Mr. Josh. We like you. And we hope you like us too. Later.